So, one piece of kit if you're new to ham radio that you can build yourself is a field strength meter. Now, why would you want one? Well, they're ideal for checking um, your radiated power, let's call it that. Maybe not necessarily measuring it, but it can give you an indication of your antenna, your radials, counterpoises, your, your general setup, the height of how well your uh, antenna can radiate because this meter on here will give you an indication of less or more depending on what you do with your antenna. Um, it can also check for common mode currents on your coax. So as a new ham messing with antennas and maybe getting some problems in your shack and things like that, having something like this as a little bit of test equipment uh, can, can be ideal really. Um, you probably don't think you need one until you've got one and then you start using it and messing with it and all the rest of it. So what is it? Well it's got a, an antenna, I've just got a short bit of random bit of wire here, copper wire. It has a meter and a, a variable resistor and the sort of variable resistor acts as like a sort of sensitivity device if you like. Um, you can turn it down for maximum sensitivity, turn it up to reduce the sensitivity. Um, why would you need that? Well you might want to turn it right down so it's at maximum sensitivity uh, to start testing either your common mode or your, your radiated power you might get maximum full hard deflection on the meter so you can turn the, the sensitivity down um, and uh, the needle will sort of come back and it won't read as high now although there's graduations on this meter I just use them as an indicator um, of of what I'm doing basically so it might come up to a 60 on here um, that doesn't really mean anything it's just that that's a, a graduation on there that I'm using as a reference antenna meter variable resistor um, you could also use a, a telescoping metal antenna this particular design also has a ground pole as well so I could actually put a, a counterpoise on here but uh, quite often I use use it to hold the uh, the meter there as well and my body acts as like a, a capacitance I guess uh, and uh, can improve the sensitivity right so let's have a look inside so this is uh, the inside of the one I made so you can just see the back of the meter on the left there here uh, the back of the uh, uh, variable resistor the two posts the antenna that's the in if you like and the ground and I've got a bit of Vero board there that I've used to put the components on. So you can see there's uh, two capacitors and two diodes. And I've got another capacitor just uh, soldered on there. You could, you don't actually have to use a piece of board like that. You can, uh, in a sort of spaghetti sort of sp spider fashion, um, you, you can just extend the legs to the relevant parts of your components. But uh, just for my sort of way of thinking and to understand the, uh, the actual schematic, uh, I've put it on a board like that. So you've got your antenna here, you've got a capacitor, then you've got two diodes, another capacitor, for your variable resistor, another small capacitor and your meter. So it's very simple. You see lots of these online. This is quite a sort of generic schematic if you like. They do vary subtly, um, but uh, they're all essentially the same. So uh, either pause the video and copy this, or just search online. You'll, you'll find lots of them. And all the components uh, and everything in the box, all bought online. And the rest of the video really is uh, of me sort of experimenting and using with this, uh, probably in the two sort of classic cases of measuring or or gauging, put it this way, your field strength from your radiated power of your antenna and common mode current on the outside of the coax either side of a choke. Definitely if you're a new ham this is a great little project to start, you know, it's a small amount of soldering which is part of amateur radio, small amount of components um, and uh, you get an effective bit of test equipment.
Okay, not the best of the conditions to play about with the new uh, fuel strength meter. Typical uh, summer weekend, uh, we got a low pressure come through, it's uh, wet and windy and about 10 degrees. A couple of days ago it was scorching sun and about 25, so there you go, that's the British uh, summertime for you. But uh, I've got the Klansman 320 here. Uh, I can uh, try it on various settings uh, to see if we can get any reactions with the strength meter that I've got here just uh, in the bush probably a couple of meters away and I've just got the uh, the whip aerial two and a half meter whip here so I've got um, like a, a counterpoise if you like an earth on here and a little aerial see where we go so I'm right up the top of the uh, 20 meter band, two and a half meter whip aerial. So let's see, uh, let's see what the tune is like without any counterpoise. Watch the meter there. Not that great, is it? Okay. If I put it on CW, then it's going to give me a tone when I transmit. Let's try low power. That's use two and a half, three watts. Not a defle no deflection at all there. Okay, let's go to high power. It's about 25 or 30 watts. We have a deflection. Just over 20 on that scale. Okay, let's now then uh, put the counterpoise on. We've got a counterpoise on now, onto the set. Let's see uh, what sort of tune uh, we now get. So put it back over to antenna. Give myself uh, a tone. Right. Wow, there you go. That's made a difference there already. Oh, there you go. That's about as good as we're gonna get at all. Back to low power. See if we've got any improvement on the meter. There's a little something there, isn't there? But not, not great. Let's go back to high power. 25, 30 watts. Wow, blimey. That's full, what a difference. So I can tune that around a bit. Turn that down. Okay. So we're on higher power. Good tune there. And uh, so if I take this out of tune, or matching I should say, take it around to there, what will be up there? Absolutely nothing. Bring it back around to tune. See the coming up? There you go. Nothing up. So that's one example of how to use the, the meter. Not only am I tuning the set here, I'm actually seeing the output over there. It doesn't actually have to be any physical uh, numbers to it, it's just getting a reaction on the meter. So at least it, it gives you some sort of uh, datum, if you like. 
so I could obviously tell then you know having the counterpoise increased it and matching through the end at the tuna unit as well and also on, on a better day uh, weather wise uh, I could uh, play around with a counterpoise I've got four out at the moment they're all about eight meters long to see if you get a better strength a better deflection on the needle by playing with the counterpoise and all the rest of it so from that point of view that's really handy to try and get a, an optimum uh, setup on a rig like this so uh, I've just uh, gone up to uh, 80 meters and uh, this is a military net on the uh, upper side brand so I'm just going to come off of here over to here and if I press the power button it will give me the um, SWR if I hold it down sorry it will give me the SWR on my quarter wave for 40 meters and it's given me over four, four so I can come out of there and I can press the tune button to engage the tuner it's now tuning away look at the uh, the meter here that is um, fuel strength meter was uh, going bananas and so if I now check the SWR again I hold that down it's giving me a sweep here so it's matched it and as it's sweeping look the uh, oh, if I just hold that there the um, you probably see that on the screen so as it comes down it goes up and when the SWR goes up it goes down which is correct so I'm getting more radiation as the SWR is lower and when it's higher there's none so that's quite interesting and obviously it's transmitting to uh, test that so I'm just gonna there you go Okay, so I've got a different setup now and using the strength meter in a slightly different use. So I've got coax coming out the back of the set this time instead of the whip aerial. And I've uh, gone up an M fed wire that is tuned for 20 meters. So the way this radio sets up, because I'm using the coax, I don't use the, the tuner, the matching unit. But I still get a deflection on the meter. So if I get a good deflection and that shows me that my area is tuned and that's that's full deflection there so I've got a really good tuned uh, low SWR N fed wire so coming up here got all this laying on the ground I've got my uh, got my meter there's my uh, coax going off to my wire uh, but also I've got this uh, this coil here to stop any common mode currents coming back down and uh, I've got about 15 turns I think on there about a four inch so with the meter I can test to see if there's any common mode current coming back down past there see if my RF choke is working so I'm on low power and if I put it over the coax and key up I get a deflection that's measuring what's on the outside of that coax same here on my matching stub same now on that bit of feed what about the other side of my choke nothing which is what exactly what I want the other side of the choke that side of the choke if I move it over Nothing there. So there you go. Strength meter measuring uh, your wigglies either side of your RF choke. That's working then, isn't it? You should definitely make one yourself. Get that in your shack. Nice little handy tool to have. Especially if you're making uh, aerials and just generally mucking around. Bye for now.